Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Our Father, we are here at this moment. I pray you will speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. We're considering the power of righteousness. The power of righteousness. You know, as a church that believes in prayers, the tendency to feel that everything is all about prayer may be there in us. And if we come to a meeting, it's not charged with much prayers. Oh, we may be disappointed or some may feel I think there is fire in this church. I think with prayer I can subdue mountains but we're shifting from prayers and looking at righteousness. The power of righteousness. Dearly beloved, I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will give me a real understanding of the untapped, unconquered, unexplored possibilities and potentials attached in righteousness. My prayer is that our generation that is being carried away by the euphoria of deliverance see the other side of God's lifting that is not deliverance, righteousness. Righteousness. The Lord is calling the church unto righteousness. The members, online members, any part of the globe where you are watching me from, the call to this great commission, great movement of God is unto righteousness. By the time we add righteousness to the little prayers we offer, it will be difficult for our enemies to see our break lights. And those of us who know how to drive, you discover in the night, if you're on a highway, the road is smooth, and there's a fast speeding vehicle behind you, and finally overtakes you and maintains the velocity with which he overtook you. And you are maintaining the speed at which you were overtaking. In the next five minutes, you can only see the brake light of that car in a distance. In the next 10 minutes, you don't see it anymore. It's gone. It's gone. And what am I trying to say? Those who feel they can or they've assessed you and they've discovered that you are going nowhere. And because of uh, they did this, they manipulated your prayers and instead of you advancing, you are rigmaroling, rotating. Dearly beloved, after this teaching, add righteousness to that little prayer. It's going to be a kind of supersonic takeoff and the speed will be maintained. In the next few minutes, you get to your destination smooth and sound. What am I trying to say? Righteousness has an immense power. 
Righteousness has a power that takes someone from obscurity. Obscurity is in the, can I say, the outskirts of the big city where not much is being done. And from that locality, from that dungeon, righteousness that is maintained in that pit, righteousness that is maintained in that zone, we pull somebody out of that underground tunnel and put him at the line light. Righteousness. Righteousness has the power to make somebody from the poorest family to be at the hand of affairs. And one will begin to wonder, how come? It's not by magic. It's not by any other thing. Righteousness. Old time faith ministries, church workers, listen attentively. The Lord is opening my eyes to discover that there is an ingredient that if a church worker gets that ingredient, uses it, <laughs> nobody can predict what you can do in the next second. Righteousness. God reverences righteousness. God honors righteous people. Though it may take time, it may take years, but at the fullness of time, you see it manifest. Righteousness. I don't have time to talk about righteousness, but when we go to the scriptures and you discover things by yourself. And you begin to now cry unto God, O oh Lord, make me a righteous person. Irrespective how people will cajole me, ridicule me, do one thing or the other. Mm. Mm. I pray that he who has ears should hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Revelation is not something that, can I say, that stays. It comes. It can just be a splash, an, an idea. And once it comes and you recognize this is of God, hit it, you will see the wonders of our God. Righteousness. In Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs 14 verse 34 Proverbs 14 verse 34 says righteousness does what? exalted a nation but sin is a reproach to any people look up brethren the wisest of all you know God asked Solomon what do you want me to do for you? He said, sir, all I need from you is wisdom. And God said, for you not asking me the lives or the lives of your enemies, not asking me for riches, take wisdom, take wealth, take every other thing. And in the Bible days, there was no man as wise as Solomon. And in his wealth of wisdom, he had understood that the only thing that can lift a man is righteousness. See, righteousness does what? Exalted a nation. But sin is a reproach unto any people. Righteousness lifts Righteousness takes one to a higher level. You have prayed all manner of prayers. It seems nothing is working. Add righteousness to it. And you will see the wonders of God. And so he said, righteousness exalted 
a nation, but sin is a reproach unto the people. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, Proverbs 10, verse 2 says, Treasures of wickedness does what? Profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Treasures of wickedness profited nothing. Treasures of wickedness. You know what people do these days to get money? They can kill them, somebody else. They can use somebody's star. All I need is I want to be on top. I want to shine. I want to be the only star radiating in the sky. The only moon. And every other moon or star that rises up is either the use dark something covered so that it will be only them shining. Beloved, the scripture says treasures of wickedness does not profit but righteousness delivereth from death. In Psalm 112, Psalm 102, verse 6. Psalm 102, verse 6 says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Surely, take it up, take it down. That's what surely means. Irrespective of the happenings around, say, he shall not be moved forever. He shall not be moved forever. What does it mean? Situations may move the righteous to some extent. There may be a paradigm shift by the unforeseen forces against the righteous that may even make him lose his cause or lose his bearing but god is saying since he's righteous it will not be forever the shifting the pushing will not be forever the affliction the suffering will not be forever it's just for a moment and since he's righteous and he's living right he said the righteous shall ever be in remembrance the righteous shall ever be in remembrance. Church, if we know this, there shouldn't be any need of struggle for leadership, struggle for position, castigating one, bringing one down so that you can come up. No. Look at it. He said, the righteous the righteous shall ever be in remembrance. Verse 6, he said, Surely he shall not be moved forever. That paragraph is saying, The righteous can be moved. That paragraph is saying, The righteous, in fact, I was discussing with a brother. And he was telling me some of the sayings, of unbelievers who belong to another kingdom trying him hmm. he said in the place of work hmm. he said there are some people who it was him they were referring there are some people here the much you do is only that it will only shake them but they are still standing and that is the righteous the much you can do to a righteous, the much you can do is cause a turbulence, shaking. But the captain of the boat is still in charge of the ship. And he's still in charge. The pilot is still in charge. Telling the people, don't bother, don't worry, and we are still in charge. And that's the much all day. And it's like the whole world will collapse. God is saying, to the righteous at times, such we come. 
But to those who don't understand, they say, if I am righteous, why am I moved? Oh, the righteous can be moved. If I am righteous, why has this befallen me? Oh, at times he can come. And when he comes, that does not mean you are not righteous. But God is saying, that moving, that shaking, that uh, turbulence, because he's a righteous, it's just for a moment. I don't know your spiritual state. I don't know what you are going through right now. And to you, it's like, I, I don't understand. But God is saying, verse 6, surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. The brothers of Joseph were after him. Why? He shared a vision God gave to him. Say, this boy, you are taking too much. So you are telling us that a day we come, we, you are seniors, we bow down before you. Thunder fire, you fire that dream. We will never live to see that dream come to pass. And they plotted on how to destroy him so as to destroy the dream. But if you are the righteous, no matter the plans, no matter the things, the wicked may plot. In fact, to them, they, they may be feeling, yes, this so-and-so -and -so had gotten to he, the end of his road. Little do they know that it is that because a righteous person that is under this torture and uh, tribulation or whatsoever, now God made his brothers to become instruments of actualizing his dream. The righteous. They pulled him out. They gathered the food the father gave to send to them. Strapped him of the coat of many colors. Carried him, threw him inside the pit. Why they were eating the food he brought to them. After eating the food, they would discuss among themselves, what shall we do? If we leave this boy, this boy will one day topple us. He said, no. See what you are going to do? Let's sell him. He pulled him out, came on the road, lifted him up as goats. Not every goat that can be lifted with one hand. But I don't know how they did it. Presented him for sale. And those merchandise going to Egypt. Stop. For sale, for sale. They stopped. They looked at him. How much? And possibly touch the back of his waist. You know, those of us who live in the village, if you want to buy goods, this is one of the places you will touch. Am I right? <laughs> My brother is laughing. <laughs> He's in the business. He said, Pastor, how come you know this? Yes, and you, you hold it here. And then know whether he's, he's strong. They tested this boy, carried the boy, gave them the money. They themselves got to Egypt, restored him. And all those taking here, pushing here, selling and reselling. These are turbulence at times that can come upon the righteous. At the end of it all, the enemy entered through Potiphar's wife to destroy this boy. Since he maintained that I will not die. One day, that thing the Lord showed me will come to pass. He said, okay, you couldn't die with your zeal, I will kill you with iniquity. And he wanted to destroy this boy with sin. And the boy said, brothers and sisters of mine, none is here. But how can I do this wickedness against my God? Madam, don't ask me of such anymore. One of the days, nobody was in the house. By force, came and grabbed Joseph. And by violence, Joseph pulled out her hands and ran. The cloth was in his hand. She raised the alarm, told a lie against Joseph. 
landed the righteous into prison. Remember what we are saying? The righteous cannot be moved forever. In other words, to some extent, the righteous can be moved. And at the end of it all, behold, from that prison, he was lifted to be the prime minister. The woman who wanted to come in, lure him into sin was answering him, sir. The husband, Potiphar, all of them were answering him, sir. Can you see what righteousness can do, brethren? Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts. Righteousness can give you what nothing on that song can do. Brothers and sisters, those who are doing mago mago business, such wealth does not last. Such wealth does not, oh, it is this, it is this, that. And you are rejoicing over somebody's sweat. The goods that are inside your shop are stolen goods. And that's what you deal on. Once you go, they come as they are coming. And their movement is different. Bah, bah, bah. They look here, look there. Drop the thing. Come out to check whether police is coming. And check around. There's no wah, 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 wah at the back. Oh boy, do fast, do fast. How much, how much? You don't need to be, you know, it's a one million. That's what they're selling it in the market. But just give me 10,000. No, boy, 10,000, they big now. Oh boy, do fast, do fast. I won't come out here. And by the time they're doing, you are, your servant has carried the goods to the backyard. And you got a good of one million, ten thousand. And you say, wow, the God of Pastor Water is a mighty God. It's not my God. My God is not a thief. It's not my God. Oh, and we pay big tithes on Sunday. Let me tell you, tithes cannot open the gate of heaven for you. Your gift cannot open the gate of heaven for you. But righteousness. We do what? We do that. And you are rejoicing. This article. Wow. Okay, my servant, check very well whether there is any mark. You see, there's an engine number. Use our machine. Remove the former number. Put our own. Fine. Ah, you are a smart guy. <laughs> my boys, you are sharp. Oh. <laughs> one is doing 419. So, uh, something happened. We are talking. I say, my brother, how do you do it? Uh, no, what, how come about this and that? Say, daddy, you know, your boy is smart. Your boy is smart. <laughs> you didn't know that that thing registered one million words in me. Your boy is smart. I say, what kind of smartness is that? Nepal took light. Because he has known where I'm going. And with that, it's difficult to see my face. It's no longer as usual. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, anything you got through crooked means goes through crooked ways. Right? One, one naira is better than one billion with somebody's sweat. And you are rejoicing, you have goods you can sell. Somebody, you, the sweat of another man. You are just driving a big car. I'm this and I'm that. And they are, are crying. Brothers and sisters, if it is the business you are doing after today, remove your hands. But for the righteous, you are one one cobble. God is saying, you will ever be in remembrance. Verse 6 says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Somebody says, Pastor Water, can any mortal live everlasting on this physical earth? No. 
there is time to burn and there is time to die. Yes, pastor. Then, why is he saying, shall ever be in remembrance? Oh, listen to this. As in Exodus chapter 20, we have generational causes. The same way we have generational blessings. The righteousness of the father that lived and died will be visited upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation that know him. Say, Pastor, what do you mean? Okay, it may sound theological, but let me tell a story to explain it in a layman's language. A man from Bayasa State who was worshipping here bought a brand new jeep. And he brought the jeep here. And this jeep is not the one they have used. Inside this premises, some of the waterproof on the seats were removed. He bought it at Transamadi at Abad a contractor to Aji. So, I prayed over it. They left for Bayasa. That jeep didn't come back till today. And the man, there were two men in that car. One is the one sitting down here looking at me. As they were returning, trailer left his lane to their own. And they were on, on top of, of the speed. The man in trying to dodge the trailer to avoid head collision, left the lane. Car entered inside the bush, somersaulted up to three times and squeezed. Those that saw a vehicle that entered the bush started running. They said they have finished. Only this great God that made them come out of that car and the car squeezed. They gave me a call. Look at what happened. I said, what? That car couldn't come back to Port Harcourt. Why? But I said, thank God you are alive because your life is more important than the vehicle. At the end of the day, I said, I must find out. Please listen. Listen attentively. Because the Bible says, the righteous shall ever be in remembrance. So we started praying. The family came and we were praying. Because to me, I said, I must get to the roots. Why? What happened? He didn't steal the money. The money wasn't stolen a contractor in oil company and was paid and he decided to buy a car. How come that the car couldn't come back and the car nearly killed him? As you are praying, the daughter manifested. He said, Pastor, this thing is as a result of what happened many, many, many years ago concerning the grandfather of the father of the girl. I said, what is it? He said, in those days, over 100 years ago, the early missionaries came to their community and they needed land to build church. They came to the grandfather of this man and said, please, can you give us a piece of land to build the house of God? And the man drove them away and said, nonsense. And the junior brother to the man said, you people come, take this land and build. And pastor, by that act of his righteousness, we said, nothing good will happen to this family. Pastor, if you doubt what I'm saying, ask the father of this child that the family, the other family that their grandfather gave land to the church and his own family which family is doing well? I asked the man, 
The man said it is the other family that the grandfather gave land to the church. But this wicked family, he said no. And so, Pastor, when we saw the jeep coming, he said no. Things like this cannot enter into this compound. And that's why we decided to squeeze it. Pastor, that's why that jeep didn't come back to Port Harcourt. He said, wow. But brothers and sisters, are you getting what I'm saying? The grandfather that gave land had died many, many years ago. But the righteousness of the grandfather, the children's children are reaping it. Are you, are you getting what you are saying? Now, the great-grandchildren are being remembered by the righteousness of their great-grandfather. Are you seeing? Though they were dead, but he's still working. The, uh, the good work of the great-grandfather is now in remembrance. Therefore, those who are doing wickedness, by the time you have lived, you are laying a foundation. And those who are doing righteousness, you are also laying a foundation. By the time you are finished living and you are no more, your great-grandchildren will be rewarded by the righteousness of the great-grandfathers. Be careful how you live now. Tomorrow you will be a great-grandfather or great-grandmother so that you don't put your great-grandchildren to be born into sufferings. Does it make sense to anybody? So we have now understood that the righteous will ever be in remain. In fact, as long as the world lives or stays, the righteous will always be remembered. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8, Proverbs 11, Proverbs chapter 11, verse Eight. Proverbs 11 verse 8, the Bible says, The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked commit in his stage. The righteous will be delivered out of trouble. Righteousness can earn you deliverance from trouble. Righteousness can earn you deliverance from troubles you don't even know. It can do that. So, dictionary defines it, righteousness as, what is morally right? What, what is righteousness? What is morally right? In other words, obeying the law. What is morally right? In other words, obeying the law. Very many today are looking for a way of promotion or recognition. But the scripture made it clear that righteousness exhausts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And beloved... Anything that will lead to your exhortation takes you to the next level of your destiny. And I am trusting God and believing him. As we go through this study, may God open somebody's eyes. If we look at the following points. One, powerful promises for the righteous. Powerful promises for the righteous. I will spend time reading and reading and reading so that you feed your spirit man with the promises of being a right of righteousness. And that will make you to desire righteousness more than anything on earth. Psalm 34 verse 15. Psalm 34 Psalm 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the what? Righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. 
The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Any part of the world where the righteous may be, in the pit, in the air, on the land, anywhere, the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. And if you are not righteous, decide to be one. God's eyes will be on you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet, have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread? Dearly beloved, to those of you, I was talking to one young man somewhere, I told the man, I said, my brother, God has put a test for you. Uh, I said, he said, he doesn't have job. I said, my brother, if you can serve God, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom and any other thing shall be. No, it is my job first. If I get job, I told him, I said, my brother, listen, Solomon first built the house of the Lord before he built his own house. He, uh, what I was talking was like pouring water upon dog fowl. I say you don't know the pattern. You don't know how God works. God can never owe any man. David said, once I was young, but now I'm old. From the experience I've acquired from youthful age to adolescence, to adulthood, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor any of his seed begging bread. Some people feel that if I should serve God, I will beg. Therefore, I don't want to get myself involved in the things of God. I don't want to get myself committed. Others, you can be doing that. But as for me, I will just be doing my business. I will just be doing my business. That's all I'll be doing. Because if I serve God, I will not have time for my business. If I serve God, I will not have time for my friends. If malaria can keep you in the house for one week, I don't know if you will have time for your business. But those who feel that God is not worth giving such a service, God is not worth sacrificing such. Listen to this. I was a senior civil servant before I furthered my education in the university. I was working. I went on study leave without pay. And so I was just there. So by the time, at, after six, uh, four years ago, it was either towards the last year, one of our district pastors called me and said, my brother, I heard you said that you, when you come back, you are going to go on full time. Never try it. Never try it. You people that were privileged to go to school, don't ever try that. Don't ever try it. It was an advice. <laughs> but I threw it overboard. Say, dwell with such advice. I will give God my very best. I will be in the field with my youthful blood. Not, I will not give God retiring blood. He deserves the best out of me. I ignored them and I left. He was saying, you are Mumu, you are this, you are that. I didn't care because I know he who has called. Brethren, listen. Are you in business and you are counting God or you feel that if I should serve God, if I should give God my whole time, that God, I will be end up becoming a beggar. Never. Or I will end up becoming somebody, a recalcitrant in the society. <laughs> it has never worked. Never. Listen, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God can never owe any man. You serve him with all your heart. You devote yourself. You consecrate all to him. It's been documented. You may not get the reward now. It may take some years. But by and large, 
at the appointed time, <laughs> it will just radiate. And the world will see that God is faithful. Hallelujah. In Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5. Psalm 5, verse 12, the Bible says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. God will always bless the righteous. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. Look up here, everybody. Please let us learn. Uh, we are all in the flesh. None of us have been to heaven before. And this is our first time of being here. And this is of our, our last time of being here. Because we are on a journey. And listen, at times, we may set some goals, or we may have some needs, or in the course of serving the Lord, we forgot ourselves. In the course of serving the Lord, we became stupid. It's not wasted. Brethren, listen, it's not wasted. It's a sacrifice given to a faithful God. It's a sacrifice given to God. If he doesn't, if the reward you are expecting didn't just come now, no, by and large, it will come one day. God will never owe any man. While we were building this place, we've just raised this and roofed it. We've not fixed the galleries. So, and we've not flood. I was just at the middle over there discussing with one of the prominent men in this city. He came to see me. So, the messing came, those bricklayers. He said, Pastor, I, I've finished. There is uh, my money. I said, okay, wait. I told my brother, please, excuse me. I put my hand inside the pocket. I said, okay, uh, take this. I, I put it here. I put, I just said, I didn't know this man was watching me. So I gave him, he left. Do you know what this man asked me? He said, man of God, the way you are doing this thing, are the children eating at all? That is it. That's the question he asked me. Are the children eating at all? Well, that is secondary. My ultimate goal is this. To him, it was stupidity. Now, we went to, in a cool evening like this, a pastor invited me to come and preach in their church. So, I went with my Camry, and when I got to the church, it was the width. It's like from here to here. It's on the road. And you have to put your leg down from up, either two blocks up because of flood. Put down their leg to enter into the small room where the brethren were. I looked at the pastor's car. It was the latest of my own. So, but that one, it was nothing. So we finished, and the brother I went with, he said, Pastor, can you imagine, look at the type of car this man is driving. I said, my brother, just, that one doesn't mind. That's, it is where his goal is, and all the rest. And that's it. There are those that it is, Mine first, before God second. I looked at my own car that has a big place like this, considered his own that has just squalor, squalor, and he was driving a big car. You say, well, that is his goal. And to him, he will be maybe looking at me that I am Mumu. He say, Pastor Water doesn't know anything and all that. Seek. First, the kingdom. 
Give him first your best. At the fullness of time, please listen. I'm talking to everybody. Listen, people will say you are stupid. People will call you names because of the way you have thrown yourself to the, to the Lord. Listen. Surrenderedness or total consecration can be defined by this story I want to tell you now. And I want to tell this story so that you use it to compare the kind of service you are rendering unto God. If a son of the king wanted to marry, announcement was made in the village that the son of the king is going to choose whom to marry. And the parents that had virgins all prepared their daughters and all the rest. It was a ceremonious, traditional um, form fair. Everybody gathered in the village square. The prince sat on his seat and all the girls from various families because nobody knows whom the prince will choose. And the parents gave their children gifts, their daughters gifts, that when they come to the king, the prince, after dancing and dancing, could give the prince this. Who knows? It will attract his attention. Okay. Among all the ladies that were to come and present themselves, a poor girl from the poorest family was among them. The mother had no gifts to offer. The mother prepared the poor girl and the, this one, as they were beating the music, boom, 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 as they were dancing, each one will dance and carry the gift, present before the king. The king will say, it will pass. Hey, the other one is just like where they are doing penalty. Do you know where they are doing penalty kick? They put the ball, and as soon as they miss the goal post, this other one will say, "At least they have lost. We, are, we will get it." The other one, it is our turn. We will get it. So another girl came, dance, 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 carry something, present to the prince. He did like this. The next person said, "It's my turn." Thank God, though, it is this. And because they positioned them based on the families they came from, the poorest had to be the last. As they were dancing, coming, giving, the prince is looking for a girl to marry. This one danced, came, gave the prince gift. The other one came, danced, gave the prince gift. These are the different types of services people are rendering unto God. As they were dancing, and it was the turn of the poor race. Silver or gold, she didn't have. Even the, to dance, you know, a poor man who didn't feed well. As they were beating, she was dancing, was dancing. Nothing in her hand to give to the king. You, do you know what she did? As she danced and danced and danced, she lifted herself, mm, threw herself to the king. The prince said, my people, stop. I told you people that I am looking for a woman being to marry. All these people that came and gave me gifts, can I marry gifts? But this girl had given me herself. And this is a woman I'm looking for. And that is service. Total surrenderment until our service unto the Lord becomes entire is not accepted. Until our service unto the Lord becomes you carry yourself and the same mumu, but you throw yourself. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You want to serve the Lord, lock your ear over what people are saying. If you open your ear to hear what they are saying, you will not please he who has called you. 
You block your ear over what people are saying. Something happened somewhere. And uh, the work of God was going on. And so people are saying, hey, can you see? Look at it. You see how, how much he has invested in this? Let him continue building church. Let him continue building church. Let him continue building church. And all the rest. I acted as if I didn't hear it. That one is rubbish. I came to this earth for an assignment until I fulfill my goal. Whatever anybody is saying, that is for him. And brothers and sisters, listen, listen. God is a faithful God. I put it to everybody. You want to serve him? He's a rewarder. He can, oh, the only thing is, in 1984, I was pre pastoring in a village. And I came in contact with this rich man. I was telling him, sir, you need to give your life to Jesus. He said, Pastor, wait. Do you know? I can't serve God. I said, why? Let me tell you why I can't serve God. I said, tell me. He said, if you serve God and God gives you power and you commit sin, he will collect it from you. But for us and Satan, we will be doing what we want and nothing, no shaking. I said, the enemy have deceived you. And that is their own understanding. But brothers and sisters, no matter how it is, serve him. No matter how it is, he's faithful. He will never fail. He will not abandon his own. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 16, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 16, Chapter 10, verse 16, the Bible says, The labor of the righteous tended to what? To life. The labor of the righteous tended to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. Why the labor of the righteous tended to life? Your labor will produce life. Yesterday, while we were praying in the uh, pastor's meeting, I told them the program has come and gone but our labor will not be in vain. I told them that until babies will begin to cry in their homes, that we will not rest. And that's our belief and that's what we have signed for and we started praying. The labor of the righteous will produce life. So if you are not righteous Understand that what you are producing is wickedness. And you will soon reap the fruit of wickedness. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28, Proverbs 11, verse 28 says, He that trusted in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous, brother, the righteous shall flourish, shall blossom as a branch. Let's be righteous. Verse 31, it says, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Chai, I love that. Do you love that? You see, the righteous shall be recompensed, shall be rewarded on the earth more than the wicked and the sinners. The righteous. Brother, it's not just mere story. Believe it, live right. Don't bother what witches and wizards that are do what they are doing, or those who may use some powers to do miracles. Relax. God is saying, the righteous shall be recompensed on the earth more than the wicked and the sinners. If it hasn't come, 
it will come. Be patient. If the reward hasn't come, brother, it may take some time. Be patient. A day will come when those that ridicule the righteous shall celebrate him. When those that called you names that are not your names. Hmm. What man of God, whom he say, leaders ridiculed and cajoled. And being a righteous person, God remembered him. And so he happened to be in the meeting where those of them who said all manner of things were. And this one said, look at him. The other one said, look at him. One amidst of them called the one they were, everybody was pointing at. I said, my brother, don't mind. Look at those. Look at them. They are like those whom what they came into this world, it has been collected. Just come, let us discuss. <laughs> don't mind those foolish people. But they were all together. Any day you are recompensed. You will change class. Any day your book of remembrance is opened, Haman will decorate you. Could you remember Haman? The arch enemy of the Jews. Who paid huge sum of money for the Jews to be annihilated? Let me use that word. Totally ex removed upon the, from the face of the earth. But God of the righteous, Mordecai, the God of the Hebrews, a faithful God, he that can never forget the labor of your love, Turn the table against Haman. After he had concluded what of plans to kill them, Esther had entered the palace and told the king, King, can you imagine? Look at look at this. Somebody in your cabinet decided to kill me and kill all my people. Say what? Who is that? Say Haman. He sent for Haman. Haman was coming to tell the king so that all of them would be killed. But since it was the king that sent for Haman, the king told Haman, he said, Haman, what do you think that could be done to him whom the king loves most in his heart? He thought, who on that son does the king love most other than me? Okay, fine. Since I'm giving the opportunity to dictate what will happen to that person, king number one. Let that, the rope you wear be put upon that person. And let the person be decorated with the regalia of the king. The second ring you, the king wears should be put on his finger. And the second horse you ride will be given to him. And the king said, as you have used your mouth to say it, go and do it to Mordecai. Yes, sir. The man he was to kill he came before him and gave him a salute because condition had made the class to change. Gave him a salute. Sir, with every sense of humility, this cloth is for you. The king said I should decorate you. Can you remove this rag we are wearing, sir? 
<laughs> no problem. <laughs> Bring your finger. <laughs> Bring your finger. He said, he said, I should put you this ring in his hand, your hand. Enter this horse, the chariot. My people, I'm telling you, I don't know, I don't know what is in my heart. But the king is saying, this ogre behind me, he's crying and announcing his promotion. So shall their enemies cry and announce their promotion. Brother, sister, listen, live a righteous life. Live the rest of the battle for the Lord. Live the righteous life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Live the rest in his hands. He knows how to turn the table. He said in the book of uh, think Ezekiel, he said, I will overturn. Overturn. And overturn it three times. He used this word. He knows how to overturn table against their enemies. Maintain a holy walk with your God. God will not allow. He was shedding tears, but was making the announcement. Oh, people of Shushan, the ogre behind me with the horse and chariot, <laughs> the ogre behind me with the horse and chariot, why are you crying? Stop that. You are a man. Pretend as if the thing is not the pain here. Okay. <laughs> uh, people, the man where they behind me, where they walk out with a horse and chariot. Now the person will go be the second in command for our land. Make anybody where the soberam in go cut in head. You know, here I am so. He was crying, making the announcement. God will force your enemies to weep while they are announcing of your promotion. They will not be happy telling the world, but at any rate, on that direct, they are saying what they don't like saying. At the end of the day, Mordecai and the Jews were empowered to kill all the enemies that planned to kill them. And the people had rest in a strange land. Any part of the world, the righteous can blossom there. There is no indigenization to the righteous. The righteous flourishes like palm trees. Anywhere, any environment, that's the righteous. That's the righteous. Can you desire to be righteous? Those of our youths that are playing with their cake, they are playing with their cake. And people are offering them ground nuts in place of cake. And they prefer to eat their ground nuts in place of cake. If you eat your ground nuts in place of cake, you will cry tomorrow. Make up your mind. Don't follow the world to do what they are doing. One of our daughters here, Said when he gained, she gained admission into the university, she told her people that as I enter the university without jewelry and makeup, so shall I come out of the university without jewelry and makeup. And when she came to the wholesale, he said, All this uh, holy, holy way you they do, oh boy, oh girl, you think say you go last, but after graduation. She announced to the whole world, to the glory of the Almighty, that the way she entered, no jewelry, no makeup, no trousers, so she came out, returning glory to God. Brother, sister, I don't know. The world may be doing it. Everybody does it. It's a pattern. If you're a boy, you must have a girlfriend. If you're a girl, you must have a boyfriend. If you're a man, you must have a woman friend. And all the rest. That's the way of the world. But that is not the way of the righteous. The way of the righteous is different. 
the way of the righteous is completely different. And the way of the righteous pleases the Lord. Those of them who waste their life and their time, I shared with you some time ago, around this time, I was at Omagua International Airport. Either I was either going to Canada or going to US, I can't remember. I think either Canada or UK. So I met my secondary school classmates. He saw me say, oh, war material. He said, war material, don't die, Tete. It's no longer war material. This is Pastor Walter. He said, yeah. My brother, see how the world kept me now. I said, I don't understand. See how the world kept me. He came to airport, I think, with a shot from Imo State. He came to Amawa to drop the sister. I said, why are you, are you at the airport? My sister is traveling to US and all that. I said, okay, me too, I'm just traveling. And we were just there talking at the entrance. I said, okay, okay, my dear, God bless you. Bye-bye. I carried my bag and entered. In the days of our SU, after our study, Scripture Union, to them, you know, boy, you're going to shit, rubbish. All these uh, Bible stupid people, they know sabi anything. Carry a girl, they don't know how to carry a girl, and all the rest. And now he is regretting. He ate, he ate his cake in form of grand nuts. Opportunity. He, he used his life, wasted it in sins. Dearly beloved, don't waste the privilege you have. Make up your mind. I think I will stop there. We will continue. It is uh, introduction and point one we try to touch. I believe God that somebody in this room will desire to be righteous. Somebody, no matter how small you may be, even if you are like this, make up your mind, I will live for Jesus. Make up your mind, I will not have anything to do with sin. Make up your mind, my life and everything in it must be for Jesus. And those of your classmates or those of your business associates, don't mind them. Oh boy, you still there for this thing? Come, let's go and see one babalawo for, for you know that side. Uh -huh. Come, let's go and see. You see how my shop the blossom. Customers, the everybody. Oga Peter, Oga Peter. See how your own. There nobody they go. Say, my dear, I will not. I will wait upon the Lord. Stupid waiting upon me. I am a deaconess. In fact, I sing in our choir. But when you come to business, whatsoever others are doing to survive, do it. This is market. No be church. Thank you for your advice. But I'm not part of it. Bye-bye. They can go and be making their billions, but a day of payment will come. A day they will pay with tears will come. But the righteous is slow and steady. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor? Righteous is slow and steady. Slow and steady. He is moving, but it's not everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. He's moving. He's on the move, but not with much noise making. God will keep the righteous. If you make up your mind to be righteous, it shall be well with your soul. Rise up on your feet and let's get to the Lord in prayer. Rise up on your feet. We want to tell the Lord. Lord, help me to be righteous. Lord, help me to live a righteous and a holy life. You say righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I want you to call upon God. In any way you have lived a life of unrighteousness, ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to pardon you. Tell him, Lord, from this day, I promise you I will live a righteous life. 
I will no longer be lawless. Oh Lord, from this day forward, I will do what you command. I will follow your ways. I don't care what people will say. I don't care the name they will call me. Lord, I will follow you till I die. I may look stupid in the eyes of others, but Lord, I will serve you till I die. Lord, have mercy on me. In any way you have sinned, in any way you have lived your life contrary to his life, his style, tell him, Lord, from today I surrender. From today I surrender. From today, as others are drinking and smoking, Lord, I remove myself. I remove myself. Lord, change me. Make me your own. Lord, make me your own. I want you to tell the Lord, oh Lord, make me your own. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to tell the Lord, oh God, give me grace to live a righteous life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord that you give me grace to keep myself holy for you. To walk with holiness and righteousness. Not to be hypocritical. Lord, help me to look, live pure and in all that I do. Tell the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our God and our Father, we've heard your word. And my God, we are promising you that we will serve you till we see you in glory. But what you are asking, O oh Lord, the heaven is the grace to do that. Give to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Do not allow us, O Lord, the heaven to fall by the wayside. Do not allow anyone here, Lord, the heaven to disappoint you. The grace, O Lord, the heaven to run this heavenly race until we meet at the feet of Jesus Christ. I'm praying and asking, O Lord, that you give to each and every one that listen to this evening's teaching in the name of Jesus. We cover the teaching with the blood of Jesus Christ. Pray and ask the Lord that you help us to meditate upon all that we've heard this evening and use them to amend our ways where necessary in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for another answer. For in Jesus' name we pray.